But the really important thing to us was getting feedback from you about, number one, what, did, what were the aha things that you heard today that are, are, are significant opportunities for the Sierra Nevada? And then number two, what do you want us to do, or do you think we should be doing in the region to leverage some of those opportunities? So if, if people could just tell me, like, let's, let's go across the room. What were the aha ideas or moments for you in the day today? Tim or Jennifer back there. Give me an aha moment. The quick way out of the top of my head it was, it's not that hard to do. So it's easy. Yeah. Well, and to build on that, you know, there are actually a lot of tools out there that are new and interesting, and you can tap them, like the uh, cloud computing. If you really want to do some online, it may actually help a retail business to actually expand its customer base and to make it uh, more sustainable in the off-season and things like that. And the tools are now easy to use and not difficult. You don't have yeah, to that was a real aha moment for me how low the barriers have come to business development because of online. Well, one of the aha moments for me was people, everyone's been talking about the need for better regional network and communication tools. That we want to talk to each other and we want to learn from each other and we love the idea that it's basically open source and free, right? We, we need the data and the information and the ideas and we're willing to share them back and forth. I loved Ari Durkel's example of the entrepreneur's fair linking capital to business opportunity and having it grow from the region. So one of the ideas I was thinking about is why can't we do that for ourselves in this year in Nevada? I mean, that wouldn't be that difficult of a thing to do. And even if it started small, I mean, I put $10,000 into that instead of my IRA. I mean, I don't really want my money. Yes. Glenda said this morning, going to Wall Street instead of Main Street, right? I want to put it in Main Street, so. Okay, other aha moments. Tim back there, you were. Oh, I just wanted to, I mean, California may be ungovernable, but it does have some important government assets, and the federal government is, is the same. I mean, Glenda herself is a government employee. The, CD, the CDCs are government-sponsored ent entities, and they have real assets to bring to bear, and they're, they've been here today. They're enormously valuable. It's part of what will help pay for the internet trunk line up to the Eastern Sierra, etc. Uh, they are us. They're part of us. They're, they're enormous assets. How many, of you, how many of you were in, um, in Doug's session today about the California Stewardship Network? Only a couple of people. So, you know, I think that point that now that the budget is done at the state level, even though no one's happy with it, uh, <laughs> and the legislative year is over, that state government is going to be focusing on statewide economic development planning, and we need to make sure that they hear from the Sierra Nevada what we want and what we need. And there's no single entity in the Sierra doing that. That's something I think this group could serve to do. That is, you know, get the get the, the information in your communities to filter into that statewide process that Doug was talking about. It, for those of you that didn't attend the session, the state's strategy is likely to be to develop a series of regional economic development strategies based on input from the regions. Um, but there are some regions of the state that are incredibly well organized, like Silicon Valley and Los Angeles, and some that are less organized, like ours. So somebody from the Sierra is going to need to is going to need to play that role, trying to hurt the cats and get people talking about what the key what the key strategies are. Other options, right here. Um, that um, small farms are doing well and actually growing in classroom and water counties. Yeah, isn't that amazing? Well that goes back to your point that we're gonna start thinking local inherently. You know, that it's getting embedded in our culture. But that's such good news to me. I, that, that's really important. Someone back there had their hand up? Over here. Back in the back. Um, the level at which the quality of the infrastructure affects the profitability of businesses and then the markets that they can actually access. Yeah. Now, that's a really good point. That came out in our last session on um, leveraging technology for your business. I mean, the 
all three people sitting at the table were basically talking about this idea that now we can go to scale in the region, whereas previously we really didn't have an opportunity to go to scale. You want to follow yeah, up? Not just in the technology realm, but also looking at the earlier uh, USDA outline of the, having everything from the producer down to the distribution and how critical the linkage is between them, and that seems to be where the major falling down is in the world. The value chain analysis. We don't actually look at every link in that value chain and figure out how we can leverage jobs and investment with it. Alex? Uh, uh, riffing off the value chain, uh, that, uh, that table of 181,000 jobs averaging $24 an hour, I think the aha moment for me was comparing it to the redevelopment of the Concord Naval Weapons Station in, in the Inner Bay Area. The, expected average wage of those 26,000 jobs from that redevelopment is 19 bucks an hour. So we're talking about, in, in a rural area, actually being able to get higher average wages than in the high cost, high wage interbay. Absolutely. I know a couple that does 125 CS, uh, CSA boxes a week, and their net gross income is over $85,000.